So today we're gonna show you how to pass A2P and get registered for your text messaging inside of Go High Level. So stay tuned and build along with us. All right, so I'm gonna cut right to the chase. A lot of people are failing A2P because they're making very kind of like serious mistakes that they gotta understand that they can't do. And mostly it's because they're putting the wrong information in the wrong places, or more importantly, they're using fake or the given information, which is all kind of basically examples and not meant to be used as actual links and everything else that people gotta go to. So the one thing that people gotta realize is when you're creating your A2P messaging, you have to have certain things in place and they have to go to real sites, real forms with real responses because there is a person on the other side that's actually physically checking this and when it comes to actual the business registration it checks against the government site of wherever your business is registered so what we're going to do today is go step by step we're also going to give you a kind of a cheat sheet in the sense that if you download our snapshot below there is our course snapshot has all these kind of things in there to make it a little bit smoother again it's going to give you kind of like the core you still have to kind of build it out and i'm going to walk you through that build out to kind of make this a little simpler and also go through what you actually need to do in order to get this thing to pass so first and foremost foremost, we have to build the assets that you're going to need in order to pass, which is you're going to need a physical page that people can actually go to, like meaning the person that's checking whether or not you're A2P compliant can see an example that you're being A2P compliant. And that's really important. So we have to build basically like a small funnel page with at least a home page where somebody can actually click on the consent box in a form in that same page. It's kind of got to look a little bit legit. So you're definitely going to need some kind of logo or your business name, some kind of action you want the user to take the form itself and has an extra precaution, we have added privacy policy and terms and service. Now, pretty much every business out there, if you are using websites, you definitely have to have a privacy policy and a terms and service. Now, you don't have to waste a lot of money on that because there's a lot of free generators out there. Now, I'm not a legal lawyer. I can't give you legal advice whether or not those are very applicable to your business and what you do. So you might want to go that route, getting like a rocket lawyer or something and, or true business that can help you fill out a terms of service and a privacy policy. But that is definitely something that's been getting us always passed because when we have those, we never have any kind of conflicts and we always get them passed. And again, we've never failed. So I'm going to go and assume that our direction and kind of what we've been doing is the right way to go about doing things. So without further ado, let's just kind of jump in right to the assets of what you need and build them out with you. So you fully understand what you need to have in order in order for this to happen. Now, if you downloaded our course snapshot, you're going to go over and you're going to go over to sites. And inside of sites, you will see something called a lead magnet. And you know it's a lead magnet, it's gonna have five steps. This is what we're gonna leverage to use as our registration, let's say kind of site that we're gonna send people to for them to verify that we're being compliant. And we wanna make sure we always build sites in this manner because we always wanna be compliant, right? So you're gonna go into the lead magnet funnel and the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you're gonna make it a live domain, meaning I have to be able to click on a link to go there. So if I'm the person that's validating this particular setup, I need to make sure it's there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to domains. I'm going to pick whatever domain I've uploaded. And if you don't know how to do that, watch our beginner videos, which is like step one of how to build your first funnel. And we go through this pretty thoroughly, but you're going to want to do that. Change this path to let's say lead magnet for your business, whatever it is. And we're just going to put a number one on there and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right. Now that I have a live page that I can send people to, I got to make sure that there's right things on the pages, right? Now, again, this is a complete template. It does not have anything. You cannot just use the template. This is the biggest mistake that people are making. They're just like throwing it all together. They're like, oh, it'll pass. It will not pass. I can guarantee you that. And every time we take on somebody and we're fixing their A2P, this is what they give us. They give us some kind of template thing that isn't even filled out or doesn't even have a form on it, or they're using it to their website that just go into their main website page. That's not the case. It needs to go to a page that has all the stuff that is part of the requirements that you need in order to be A2P compliant. This is a template for a lead magnet. I don't have a lead magnet. I just want to pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a waiting list. So I'm gonna come over here to the logo. I'm gonna change the logo to one of my logos. If you don't have a logo, literally just create something in Dolly or ChatGTP or order one on Fiverr for like 15 bucks. There's so many ways you can create logos right now. It doesn't even matter what the logo is. You wanna make sure it says your name of your business that you're gonna be registering because you wanna make sure that there's some likeness and it looks like a legit site, right? You wanna make sure it's not a fake site. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna get rid of all this and it's literally gonna be join our waiting list. And if you have a lead magnet, even better, just put it on the lead magnet. This is exactly what you need to do. If you already have an existing page, just make sure you're adding the right form. We included a form that's called the SMS opt-in form. 
you see it does say opt-in SMS. This is the one that you have in here. This is the one that we recommend you using because that's the one that's gonna have everything you need. Same thing with the lead-in opt-in form. It has that already. And you're gonna notice that it has the consent box and you're also gonna notice that we added some code in here for terms of service and privacy policy. Again, doesn't say it's a requirement, but we've been doing it in every one and we've been getting them passed. Now, here is like the image of what they're waiting list for or product. If you don't have it, that's okay. Just get rid of this, make it a single form and join our waiting list. We can't wait for our product release or whatever else. They'll come in here, they'll fill all this out. And if you don't have any of the bottom stuff or you want to fill it out and make it a true lead magnet, even better. That's the whole purpose. Get rid of this, get rid of this. The logo here at the bottom, just again, replace it with whatever logo. And this is a made up logo. We literally got it off of Canva and you got to change the background color for whatever reason. Every time we do this, the background color just disappears when we do a snapshot release. But you're going to also notice that the custom values and the privacy policy here. Here's the cool thing. These and the ones in the form that you see there are all pre-made custom values. So if I highlight this and I go to the little chain link, you're going to notice that there's a custom value there. What a custom value is, is a pre-made value that we just got to fill in on the back end and will automatically pop. Now, it right now is going nowhere because we don't have a privacy policy or terms and service to link in here. So if you have those, we're going to show you next where to do that. Now, again, I have the right form. It has the terms of service and privacy. I have the consent box. I'm asking for phone number and I have logos everywhere. And this legitimately looks okay. And guess what? It is a pure live site, meaning it's a site that I literally can click on and go to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit publish and we're going to move to the next step, which is what I said about a terms of service and a privacy policy. Now, again, not legal lawyers can't tell you where to get them, but if you go online and literally look up privacy policy, there are a gazillion places where you can go. Do your research and go there and get one made. We use Rocket Lawyer. We've also used Termly. It's really up to you. And again, there's so many choices here. Again, Termly is kind of the way we really like to go because what's really cool about Termly is if there are updates to privacy policy and terms of service, they will automatically update for you. And it's like almost just adds to your site. If not, literally just go to any of these other services. Just check where you go. Again, we can't advise you which one to go to because again, this is more legal than anything else. But first I'm going to get my privacy policy. It's going to generate me one and it's going to generate a bunch of text. Now I have in this lead magnet example, a privacy policy page. So I'm going to click on this policy page. As you can see, it's already got an address and I'm going to go back and edit. Again, the biggest mistake people make is they take the templates, they don't modify them and then they send people to a blank privacy policy. Well, if there's a human being checking this, you're gonna immediately fail and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna upload from the image library. I'm gonna put some logos and here, whatever text, the rocket lawyer, the term leads, all those things generate, I'm just gonna literally copy and paste directly in here and I'm gonna put my entire privacy policy in here. Now, I don't care about making it pretty. I don't care about any of that. All I wanna do is make sure I have a valid privacy policy. Next, I'm gonna come over here, modify the logo just the same. And again, I just got this from Canva. It was a free media thing. Yours will be your logo. And again, I change the background color because for whatever reason, whenever you upload a snapshot, the background color disappears. And again, I'm gonna leave this blank because I'm gonna tell you where to fill out location name, terms of service and privacy policy because all these things are gonna be values that you need. Great, now I'm done with my privacy policy. I added my legit privacy policy where it says place your privacy content here. And again, you wanna make sure it's legitimate and you take your due diligence in order to do that because you're gonna need it for any website or funnel you build anyway to protect you legally from anything that might happen, right? Now I'm gonna to go to my terms and service. Notice again that the links are here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit and we're gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to go to the logo. I'm gonna upload the logo first. Oop, do not create with, well, you could create with AI if you like, but I'm gonna do it here. Terms of service and fine. Again, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna change the logo down here. And the reason I'm just adding the logo is for legitimacy for it to look like really good. If you don't have a logo, get rid of the logo piece, just put the name of the business up here. Again, do not thread over these things. It's just, again, we've been doing it with logos and we've been passing. So I'm just telling you everything that we did to pass to make you sure that you're doing the same exact things. Again, I'm not changing the location name or the terms of service and privacy policy thing because those are custom value links that we're gonna update in a second. Now in here, once I get my terms and service, right? We looked up privacy policy, guess what? If I do terms and conditions, I know I keep seeing terms and service, but it's terms and conditions. Come in here, look at this. Termly, Rocket Lawyer, Terms and Conditions feed, templates, all this other stuff. Just get one of them, do whatever you need to do. Once you get the written text, it goes in here. Again, do not cheap out on this. Do not use a template that has nothing on there because if somebody, the human that's checking to validate whether or not you're valid comes here and checks that, 
you're gonna be screwed because then you're not gonna have anything up. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit publish, and now it's publishing it and making a real site. All right, once I do that, awesome. Now I have my terms and service and I have my privacy policy and I have a link to give for an example for them to go check that I'm legitimate, I'm following all the practical examples of what needs to be done. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna duplicate my tab, one of my hidden secrets. If you haven't watched our top 10 tips of little like secrets and hacks that we do, that's definitely one of them. That's literally saved my life. I can't even tell you how many times. All we did was duplicate the tab. These are both tabs of the same thing. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna go over to custom values. And this is a teaching account. You won't have all these. You might have a lot more. You have, might have a lot less, but I come in here and the first thing I'm gonna do is go privacy, okay? And in here, here, I need a link. So I'm going to go to my privacy policy link. Remember, because the first thing I did was make this thing live so I could start leveraging the links. I'm going to come over here. All I did was do the search under custom values under the settings. And in here, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit edit custom value. I'm going to drop it. Boom, I'm gonna hit update. Now I have my privacy policy link, which will fill out in those links, in those areas that I told you that's gonna be, which is what you need. The next thing I'm gonna do is, well, I need my terms and service. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna say terms, and you're looking for terms and conditions. I know I keep saying terms and service, I'm so sorry, but I mean terms and conditions, terms and conditions link. I'm gonna come over here, Go to terms and conditions. Remember, this is after I put it all in. I went to these sites, I got my privacy policy, I got my terms and service, and I put it in. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm telling you, every time we take over an account to get past A2P, this is the first thing we see failed. They have nothing of this in place, and it's all templated, and it's not theirs, and it just creates a problem. But here, I go back to my custom values, I look up terms and conditions link. I come in here, edit the custom value, boom, and I drop that link in there. Now that part is done. What we do, now we have a page to send them to, we have the terms and service, and then we have the privacy policy, and we have the actual form. But let me take you where the form is. So again, if you need to make alterations, or you gotta modify the wording based on, you know, advice that you received, by all means, let me show you where that is. I'm gonna come over here to Builder, and the one I'm looking for is Lead Magnet, because that's the one we modified. Lead magnet opt in. You could change the name of it. You could do whatever you want. And you're going to notice this field again. And the script gives us these two things at the bottom, which again is a code that we have that you could leverage. Here's the HTML. And by the way, if you have already existing website and privacy policy, you can just link to those and you don't have to use the ones that are provided in that page. So for instance, if you had a website for like 10 years already, and in that website, you have a terms of service and a privacy policy, just use those links. That's perfectly acceptable as long as it's the same business. Now, when you're using those links in that custom value section that we just did like a few seconds ago, just put those links in there instead of the ones that we created inside this funnel. Or you can have a place where both of them exist. Completely up to you, does not matter. But you're like, wait a second. I got to change the language here because I don't like the way it sounds and I got to modify it towards mine. No problem. This is the text message opt-in area. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the back button. If you want to modify that area right there in that field, what you're going to do is you're going to go to settings. In settings, you're going to go to custom fields. In custom fields, you're going to type in text. Text message opt-in right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on it. I'm going to hit edit. And if you want to change any messages in here, it's not supposed to be out. It's supposed to be stop. I don't know why it looks like that. Okay. And we're going to hit save and it will automatically update everywhere that you have. Okay. So very, very important. So now we're going to go to the automations part, which is just want to make sure that we have a bunch of automations set that are going to make you compliant now. And that are also going to give you really good text messaging, best practices. Now, one thing to know is that if you download our snapshot, they're going to be included and we've labeled them C1, I think all the way to C7, but we're going to validate that right now. And there's going to be a couple of things that we want to make sure we walk you through. Now, I'm not going to build these things out because they're already included in the snapshot. It's going to be a little bit of a waste of time and it's already turning into a long video. So I'm just going to guide you through them and what we're going to do in each one. Now, the reason why I work on the automations first is because part of the check is if they put in their information and they check the box, there has to be a double opt-in. The double opt-in means I get a text message the second I consent that says you have now been officially opt-in and it relays the same messaging I had on the consent box. So you want to make sure that you have that in place. The other thing is you want to make sure that you have reply with stop at any time because that has to be compliant because if you don't have that on and you send text messages out, it has to be at the end of every single message. That's the rules, folks. If you're going to play the text messaging game and it's going to be automated in any way, you need to ensure you have that at the bottom of every single text message that goes out. Now, in here, if you download our snapshot, you go to C3 
And in here, we can go over which each of these are. Now, we decided to put in help. So if any point in time, a customer replies with the word help in different formats, high, lowercase, uppercase, and exact, whatever it is, we immediately send an internal notification to whatever user. You got to select the user in here. And then we then send just a quick little message to the customer. Hey, we have alerted our team and someone will be with you shortly. Very simple. The first one is help. You don't have to have it. We decided to have it. Now, we like to use the word stop and out for getting people out, but we do have stop first and then out. So when we say reply with either stop or out to be opted out of our messaging, we do it in that order. Because if you put out first and not stop, sometimes they have a problem with it. Depends on the person who's validating. So honestly, just put stop first and out or just use stop. Now, come in here. Here's stop, here's out. And the reason we do that is if too many stops go up, you will get flagged as you know not doing really quality text messaging and eventually your account can get canceled and your registration can get pulled. So you might wanna be very cautious in how you're doing it. So again, the second they reply without, we immediately stop the SMS. We remove the tag of the opt-in they originally got. We set the contact to DND &D in SMS, again, enables for specific channels. And then we send an internal notification to all users that somebody requested to go out. Now, after that, we're going to come in here and we have the opt-in, which is again, the, one of the critical parts. Now, if the second somebody either replies with start or the contact changes because they added the text message field, because this will come blank. If you have our particular snapshot, the second you load it for whatever reason, this particular part comes in like this, it comes in blank. So all these, you're going to validate these are all here. All right, boom. And you're going to notice that when it comes to contact change, which is the most critical one, if the text message gets added which is this right here, it gets consent. We hit save trigger and you're gonna hit save again. Now, every time somebody checks that box, no matter where you put that checkbox, because once you create a custom field for a form, you can use this checkbox anywhere going forward. So we wanted to make it where it's general enough where if anybody clicks that box anywhere in our system, we tag them as opt-in in and we send them an opt-in message. We also have this where it doesn't allow for multiple coming in. So if they've already been consented, this message won't go out because you only really need to send it on the first initial opt-in message that goes in. And again, welcome. First name, welcome. You are now official opt-in to receive messages from location name. This is required. You have to state your location in order to do that. I'll go over exactly what the requirements are. Messages and data rates may apply. Recurring messages vary. Reply help for help. Stop to cancel anytime. You can put stop or out. Cancel anytime if you like. But again, stop is the required one. You need to make sure it's there. And we repeat the location name again. Again, a little bit of overkill here, but honestly... 100% pass rate, not going to knock it. All right, so we go from there. That's all said and done. So we're going to save that. Again, the only thing that you have to validate is that sometimes this trigger of contact change, if you're downloaded or snapshot, becomes blank. So just make sure you go through it. Now, bad numbers is that if there's any kind of Twilio error, which again, SMS and capable are not valid, we immediately add an invalid phone number and we set the contact DND to DND enabled for that specific channel because we don't want to keep sending and erroring out on messages going out. And then the last is start. So at any point in time, make believe I stop text message by typing the word stop and I was like, oh man, I made a mistake and I want to re-engage. You can type in the word start and we'll automatically restart the person in and take them back to that opt-in message that we messaged before. And it adds the opt-in channel right here and it disables the DND that they were on before. So again, just here, these are all best practices. Now that my automations are in, let's get to the really critical part, which is the messaging. And the messaging again is where people make a lot of mistakes. We have our website, we have our form, we have a legitimate website with an actual link that people are going to go to. We have privacy policies and we have terms and services all linked up and ready to go. We have automations that if somebody types in the word stop or start that they're being addressed and there's an opt-in message, a double opt-in message going out to ensure that we're being compliant when somebody opts in. So now that those things are done, now now I can get into the business settings. So I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to my business profile. And here's the secondary mistake that a lot of people make. When it comes to your business settings, if I go to an example out there, and I think we actually have an example here that we included for you. So at least in the United States, and it's going to be different on every country. And obviously we can't address every country and every kind of situation out there and sold props and all this. But for most businesses, when you register with the IRS, you get, and this is for the US, you get a registration that has your LLC name or your business or your S Corp or incorporated name with a business address and an actual EIN number. This is what the state has on your behalf. Most people fail because they decide to put whatever their current stuff is and forgot that the state has something completely different. Well, the bot that they're using to validate your business registration is going to the state sites or their sites that are registered by the government. So if something's not matching 
updating and not updating, then you will error out and your registration will fail. And mind you, you're paying for every time your registration fails. So if you haven't updated your business name or you haven't updated your address, just change it to whatever is listed on this page or in the government site. You can actually go to the government site for your particular state and look up what you're registered under, what address they have, what name they have filed under, and then use that to register. So if this white document, if I go to my settings, all right, and again, it's going to be different in certain states, but whatever you're registration with the state says or the IRS, this is exactly what you want to do here. So your business friendly name, if it's Nuno LLC and it's all capitals and again, 100% pass rate, not going to knock it. If that's the way mine is written in that document, I copy and paste this exact thing and I put it in the business friendly name and also the legal name. The reason why the business friendly name is important is remember that location name that we have everywhere in our writing, in our little custom value area? This is what's gonna show. So if all of a sudden I'm registering and this says one thing, but my location name says completely something different, at least for the registration process, you are gonna fail because there's a mismatch. Now, the other thing is when you put your business phone number and everything else, again, your name, your domain, your business phone number, Branded domain, it doesn't really matter. Your website, honestly, I'm gonna come in here. Oop. I'm gonna drop that right in here. I'm gonna paste, boom. And then I'm gonna have that there. Now, the street address is, again, the biggest mistake that people make because they gotta follow that whatever that EIN registration number gets you or whatever registration your country has. Because again, the one thing that you have to understand is they are gonna check the registration on whatever government site. So you're gonna make sure that this is all matching. And again, this will be your registration matched on that EIN. Again, it'll be literally whatever it says, that's what you're gonna put. And then once this is again, matching your EIN registration or whatever on the actual government state site or the government site, that's a full match. Now you're ready to proceed to the next area. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you have an authorized representative, which is gonna be you. This really doesn't matter as long as they can get a hold of you and in touch with you if something is wrong. The second is, again, however your business is registered, LLC, S Corp, whatever it is that you got registered in whatever country you're in, whatever industry, your EIN or registration number, again, different countries are gonna do different requirements and then your business registration and who you serve. If you're gonna to go to the sole prop area, you're gonna put my business is not registered and you're gonna use Oh, I'm sorry, you already selected it here. All your white paper stuff in your EI registration is matching whatever government website that you're following. And then more importantly, you're gonna come over to the right-hand side after your authorized representative, your business information is done. And you're gonna select this by make SMS compliant by adding opt-in message at the end of every message. Same thing with by make SMS compliant by sending the sending information, which is again, whatever you have here in this Friendly business name is what's gonna show there. So that's why you wanna make sure there's a match, at least while your registration is being processed. What you do afterwards is on you, but you wanna make sure that that's pretty reliant and it has everything that you need. Now that I have fully did this part and it's completely legitimate and it's matching everything, now I can finally go in and pick a number, right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna add a number, add whatever number you want. The way to pick a number, if you wanna filter it by like kind of the area code that you live in, which is what we recommend, or you can get a 100 number and all that other stuff, you're gonna come in here and it's gonna be first part of the number, right? Because that's gonna be your area code. Now, the second I get a number in here, I'll select it. I'll go ahead and proceed to buy. I'm not gonna do it here, but I proceed to buy. But this number I save, if this is gonna be the number I'm gonna leverage, and I'm gonna use that number as an example, so then when they type in the word start, they get the message that they need to when it comes to the double opt-in that we've already created and that's already on. All those automations we created should all be on now because we're gonna get into the registration part, all right? So I copy the number, right? I'm just gonna drop it somewhere. Here, you know what? I'll just drop it in this search box right here. I'm gonna leave it there for a second. Now you'll have a number already added. I completed all my company profile stuff. I'm gonna to go to the trust center and now I'm gonna start the registration. Again, let me show you how I did that. Go back to manage numbers. This is the screen where we're at. I'm gonna hit the trust center right up here. And if you don't have the trust center enabled and you're using somebody's white level version of high level, just reach out to them and make sure to convert you over to LC. They might even have an internal process that they want you to follow. If that's the case, just make sure you do that first because if you don't see that trust center window, then you don't have LC ready to go. Now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna hit start registration now. Again, is this entity currently registered in the United States or Canada? I'm gonna say yes. If you go no, this is again, this is only strictly the States for the no part. You're gonna to have to go and figure out for your own individual country, but for now it's gonna be yes. Does this have a registration as an ID? Absolutely, I'm gonna hit continue. And again, your business name has per your registration. It literally legitimately says exactly in here. And to the exact business name, have registered with the government, mention your tax document, W2, W9, and all that. So you wanna make sure that you have it exactly the way it's 
it's registered. So literally a copy and paste from that teaching. Again, if it was Nuno, all capitals, LLC, that's exactly what I'm going to put in. It's a limited liability. It's an EIN, at least in the States for an LLC. Come in here and I'll just make up whatever number because this is not real. I'll pick the thing that's in. Let's just make sure it's education. And then it's going to be not leaving it your name and your domain. You got to put in your name at whatever domain that you're going to receive mails in. All right. So if it's Nuno at Nuno.com, I want to make sure I put Nuno.com. All right. Again, big mistakes that people make is that. And again, the website URL, I'm just going to send them back to that example that I created that's live so I can get this thing passed so I can rock and roll with text messaging. Right. I'm going to copy this, come in here, paste. Hit continue. I'm ready to go. Now, same thing. The address must match the registration address with the state and the government. So this would match that registration number. And again, you would fill in your street, your city, your zip code, and then you would hit continue. Same thing. First name, last name, your email address, your phone number. It should be a phone number that is going to go directly to an actual number, not a Twilio number, because if they need to get a hold of you, you want to make sure they can get a hold of you. And then your position, then hit continue. Now, depends on how many messages you're planning on sending. If you're a type of person, Person that's going to be doing less than 6,000 text messages per day, you're going to do a low volume standard. Anything above that, you're going to do the high volume standard because you're going to do way too many that they're going to make sure that they don't put blocks on you in order for you to get past. Now, this stands to be a little bit more of a rigid checking. So you want to make sure that all those pages and things are in line and you want to make sure that that's all there. We're going to pick low volume standard because most businesses are low volume, especially local businesses. And you're going to acknowledge a brand registration is a one-time fee of $20. So that's every time you need to register. That's why passing this thing on the first shot is super important. Campaign fee will be charged in case of campaign failures and resubmissions. Additional campaign fee can be $12 per month and will apply in accordance to TCR rules for both failed and approved campaigns. At some point in time, they're going to start charging $12. Just understand that. Usually we only register one campaign because everything's going to fall under appointment reminders or promotional reminders of some sort. So, But just know that the second you check that, that there might be two additional fees. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Next, this is a Again, the biggest mistake people make. They give you great examples, but people don't replace the company name. And that's the critical piece. So if you're doing the low volume mixed, there's a whole bunch of other things you can do. Two-factor authentication, customer care, everything you possibly think of. And then you're going to go through this, right? So in the example, you're going to come over here and the examples are legitimate. They're great examples. I use the one where it shows that this is going to be confirmation reminder messages. Customer, once they have booked an appointment on the website and they opt in to receive promotional notification from the company name. Now, if you're choosing this most important, absolute thing, you got to read through this thing and whatever it says, book an appointment with company name. All right, switch it out to the company name that you said that you are on website and opt in to receive promotional amps from company name. All right, in here, same thing, Nuno LLC, right? Obviously not a company, but you get the point. Now in the sample messages, this is great too. Hey John, this is Jane from company name. <laughs> Gotta make sure you change this. The problem that most people are doing is they're getting these examples and they're copying and pasting. This is not a real number and they're missing out. They're failing completely, all right? So I'm going to come over here. Remember that number that we bought? Copy it. Because this is going to be the live number that I want them to test. And I'm going to paste. Boom. In case you need to reach a schedule, reply stop to unsubscribe. Two things that it always requires. And it tells you exactly what it is. Must include lead name. Hi, John. Must include your name, Jane from Nuno LLC, which is the business name. And the opt-in language. Reply stop to unsubscribe. You do not have this in your examples. You don't have a valid number in here. This thing will fail. All right, next, hey, must include lead name, your name, business name, and opt-in. If you're using the Dr. Lee example, which a lot of people do, you're going to come in here. You are not a doctor. This is Nuno from Nuno LLC. Notice that the sample does not have the business name. You have to add the business name. And again, we are confirming your appointment for tomorrow at 9 a.m. Reply stop to cancel. You have to include... The business name, your name, and hello, a lead name, which is going to be John. Notice again that the sample was wrong and you have to modify the sample in order to be right. So that's, we're good here, right? Now, the message will include embedded links. The message will include phone numbers. I always put these on because I don't know. I'll make a mistake one day and I don't want to get fined. And there are fines that are being issued and not by them, but by the carriers. Anytime you're doing any kind of weird things that you shouldn't be doing. And they are issuing the fines and going to be directly billed to you, the consumer. So you want to make sure that you stay away from the fine territory and be very legitimate in everything that you're doing. Again, this is why we're doing this to make sure we're completely legitimate in everything that we do. Then we hit continue. Again, the biggest one that fails all the time is this sample right here. Right here.
If I use this sample, which is a great sample, it's a great example. How do lead contacts consent to receive their messages? People will always leave the sample here. They need to validate an actual site that is working that has all the things I mentioned before. So now that I have my wonderful lead magnet, that's a waiting list, whatever the heck you wanna make it be, you're gonna come over here, you're gonna paste that. That is gonna be exactly where they're gonna go. And they're filling in the details and look, users check a box to receive notifications and personal messages provided by their consent. My page has a consent box. It even has terms and service and privacy policy on the bottom of each page. So I am legitimate and ready to go. So now I come in here and additionally, end users can text the word stop to, again, this is a fake number. You have to go back. Remember that number we bought? We're gonna copy that and we're gonna just drop it in here. Now this is a legitimate, like an actual number that people, if they dial that number and they put the word start and somebody's physically checking that on the TCR side, which is the compliance side, I'm good. They can type in start, I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, now again, here's a funny part, right? Here, you must contain the name and the opt-in words for the opt-in message. If you downloaded our snapshot and you go to our automations, and you can modify this again. It's got to be very specific to your business. If you feel that there's a need for it, check out a legal lawyer. We're not saying that this is necessarily what you need for your business. So just be very mindful of that. Again, yours might have different requirements, but our opt-in message is basically repeating exactly what we said. So we copy and paste, control C, and whatever this opt-in message is, I'm going to go ahead and hit paste. Contact name. All right, we're gonna remove this. We're gonna put John, We've been using John all along. Welcome, you are now officially, probably spelled that wrong. Yep, officially opt-in. I gotta go back and change that. To receive messages from location name. It won't pull this custom value, so you have to write it in, you know, LLC. However, yours has been writing in. Message rates may apply. Recurring message frequencies vary. Reply help for help. Stop to cancel at any time. And again, we repeat, you know, LLC. That's it. You hit submit and your chances of passing are incredibly, incredibly high. I hope this is informative. I hope this gets you guys passed. But again, this is the common errors that we see. And it's mostly because people are not doing the right business settings first, as far as what's registered with their state. The second part is they're using the samples and they're not changing it to match their businesses. And there has to be a legitimate site that TCR goes and checks against to ensure that you're being compliant. 30 something odd minutes. Hope this was helpful. We gave you the snapshot with a lot of the stuff in there. Again, terms of service, you got to get on your own. Own. privacy policy you got to get in their own and again these opt-in messages might not be very reflective to your business or what you need so make sure if there's a different change or it doesn't work for you that you're going back in there and checking so very important hope this helps and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>